uh, we will have uh, Danny from over at the JGI presenting about JAWS. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Let me see if I can share my screen. Uh, okay, sharing the screen. Can you see my slides? Because now. I... Uh, we see your desktop. My desktop? Yeah, the desktop. Oh. Yeah. Oh, desktop one or two? I think it's the, probably the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, let me try again. Uh, one second. Oops. So that's step one. I think you should be able to see this. Let's try again. Can you see now my presentation? Uh, we still just see the, the Google Chrome window with the slides on it. Okay. Oh, no, there we go. It's full screen now. We're full set. screen? Yep, it's yeah. full screen. Great, thanks. Okay, awesome. Perfect. So thanks so much. Um, so first of all, good morning to everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you guys uh, today. And thanks uh, for the organizers. Thanks, Nick, for inviting me uh, to this opportunity to talk about JOS. So the title of my presentation is uh, the distributed workflow management using JAWS. But before we dive in, okay, how can I go to the next one? Okay. No, why is it not working? Now, here we go. So uh, before we dive in on JAWS, I would like to discuss a little bit about our work that we do here at JGI the Joy Genome Institute. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with our work, but our mission is uh, to uh, provide to the global community, to the global research community, um, the most advanced integrative genome science capabilities, uh, supporting also the DOE, uh, DOE missions. Our uh, JGI was established in 1997 and became a user facility in 2004. And as a user facility, as a user facility, we um, we have our primary users. There are science around the globe who submit proposals to us, and they send unique samples from fungi, plants, microbiomes as part of their studies. And each one of those samples. Uh, we'll sequence um, the samples and each one of those samples became data. And of course we need to analyze that data. And um, so here um, we need to analyze the data and that data, all those results that became available uh, in all the data portals that we have at JGI. And for that point on, our secondary users can benefit of this data as well. So currently we are uh, over 2,000 users, 2,000 primary users, and over 15,000 uh, secondary using, users. And we are generating more than 14 uh, pentabytes of data. So now I would like to focus my presentation on the computational, the GGI computation needs in order to be able to analyze the da this data. And uh, you can imagine that or our requirements are very diverse because depending on the size of the data. So we can go for a small uh, data sets that require, of course, a small computer in scale for, um, for that where our staff, they have a little bit more options available because they can use um, the cloud, AWS, Google Cloud, but also mainly they are using our um, a JGI Dory cluster, and also we have available LI, LBL IT Laurentian cluster for that. However, and we can do, of course, exploratory data analysis, small scale production work on those systems. However, when we need to um, go to large scale data sets, we need uh, large scale systems like NERS. So we need to migrate that production work either in, like the develop that we like doing develop work on the small uh, systems to systems like NERSC, and we need to move that work over there. Uh, in this process, you may know that moving, migrating, 
the work from one system to another um, can be very, very ch challenging. And But we need that in order to spread uh, our workflow analysis. And here, just a uh, thing that I was thinking during Deb's talk, she mentioned that they spend a, long, uh, a lot of time thinking about the definition of the workflow. And for when I am talking about workflow, I'm always thinking about bioinformatic analysis and bioinformatic tools. So we have one data, one file, like a FASTA Q file that is coming from the machines that are sequenced the data. And we need to uh, analyze that raw data and do multiple steps in that. So when I, my definition of the workflow analysis is like each one of that analysis, each one of the tools that we apply on the data to um, remove something or to get something else from the data, that are the steps on my workflow and my pipeline analysis. Um, but then when moving, going back to moving, migrating to different systems, we are all familiar with these issues that involve managing like multiple user accounts, the user needs to have access to Laurentio, to the Dory cluster, to NERSC, to all the other systems that we have available. And also users need to understand and they need to adapt the workflow based on the difference between the systems, like they need to adapt the workflow based on the batch uh, scheduler or the file system that is available in each one of the systems. Of course, we also know the machines can be different. So uh, CPUs versus GPUs, the local disk uh, versus parallel file system and uh, memory can also uh, be different. And then one additional thing here is like, we know how hard can be to uh, implement the workflow, the execution of the workflows via cron tabs. So um, also that's something that is a burden on, on our staff. So in summary, we know that portability is a lot of work and can be a lot for our staff, especially for the staffs that are not software developers, or um, they don't have the computational skills. They are science, they are doing and looking to the biological aspects of that data. Um, and JGI had its own challenges, internal challenges. And the reason of that is because we have this all different, each one of these um, are different um, teams within JGI and each one of these internal teams, they have their own uh, expertise in specific domains. And then usually uh, each, each team requires maybe a software development team and they will develop their own workflow management system, probably based on the developer's skills and um, preferences or what is trending at the moment. Um, so there is a lot of duplication of efforts because we, uh, our, our raw data is the same as coming from the sequence machines. So we share a lot of the bioinformatics analysis step. So um, a lot of duplication effort and each one separate thing. In addition, we face uh, here um, a dilemma because now we have this collection of computational workflows. Um, However, it's very, very hard to maintain that. And um, they can be tied to one developer that is tied to um, many dependencies and these dependencies may no longer be supported. So that uh, creates like a big issue. And when we think at the organizational level, it's a waste of resources. So uh, however, here, I think we have a solution and which is standardize the workflows, the way we develop the workflows. And for that, we develop JAWS, which uh, stands for, for JGI Analysis Workflow Service. And our main goal with JAWS is to help users, is to help users to um, distribute the, the workflow across multiple sites. Uh, and also to standardize the way that they are developing this workflow. 
So JAWS provides a user-friendly interface. And of course, we've moved the data um, to the computational side for the user uh, using Globus for efficiency um, data transfer. Uh, Chrome also uses, um, sorry, JAWS also uses Chrome behind the scenes uh, and that rely on workflow description language, Widows. And it's a way to standardize uh, the description of the workflow. So this approach improves reusability, um, reproducibility, the shareability of the workflow analysis with NJGI, but also with um, the community, because when we publish a paper, we can also publish the workflow and um, everything that we need to actually to, to have the analysis in place. And we, in that way, we foster, I believe that we foster collaboration and also innovation, not with NJGI, but also with the entire community. Um, and then of course here, um, we are not here to reinvent the wheel. So JAWS was built using existing tools very well supported in the humanity. Here you can see a glimpse of the tools that um, JAWS uses. Um, and as I mentioned, our main goal is trying to simplify the user experience when distributing um, the workflow to other clusters. So they don't need to think about all the main things we I mentioned as a challenge uh, to have a, um, a account in each one of the system, which is the uh, scheduler behind the scenes. So um, the data um, management side, uh, because we are moving the data. So all that we try to simplify that process and that experience for uh, the user and the users or the staff, they can focus what is important, which is, which is the science. Um, so here it's a little bit more, um, details about uh, which um, resources that we have available. And the main, um, as I mentioned, to um, help the users with this process, users will develop the workflow once and run anywhere. So the combination between the widows and the Docker containers uh, to, to have uh, all the tools necessary to run that workflow in a container, and then that will be submitted uh, to JAWS and then JAWS can spread this work um, across all the different clusters. So currently we have the capability to submit the work to uh, the JGI Dory cluster and also the Laurentian cluster here at LBL. And then we have access to one uh, cluster at Tahoma at EMZO. And also of course we have NERSC, uh, you, we are using Permutter and NERSC. And we are currently working with the Oak Ridge and the Argo National Laboratories to deploy JAWS in their systems. Um, this is part of the IRI initiative that you heard so much today. Um, so we hope by the end of uh, next month, March, we'll be able to have our system uh, JAWS, a new site deployed at Oak Ridge, and that will be available for our users. And then next after that will be Argon. Um, I would like also to mention here that we have the capabilities to submit our jobs to AWS, to the cloud. However, at the moment we disable that, um, that site. Uh, each one of the clusters, I will refer that to a job site. So um, we disable the AWS site since most of the work can be complete uh, within the, the resources that we have available. Once we, um, we not able to run the production work and the resources that we have available, then we can scale that um, to AWS. But of course, I also need to mention that we only want to go to the cloud because um, the, uh, is expensive. We only want to go with workflows that the users develop and we know they are very efficient to not, not to waste the resources. So in this slide, it's a little bit more about how we design JAWS and which components uh, JAWS has. And um, JAWS is 
um, a combination of five components and I'll go through them. So first of all is the JAWS client, which is the user interaction with JAWS. Um, it's a command line interface that uh, contains many features for the user to from like submitting a job to us so to monitoring uh, the runs and getting some statistical uh, information about the jobs as well. Uh, then we have the JAWS Central, which is the piece, this is the central piece of JAWS that will um, communicate with each one of the sites in this patch, the, the, will do the job to distribute this work in the different sites that we have available and also keeps the record of the runs for, uh, from the users. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, our, our data transfer is, uh, use, we are using Globus. So this is also a central piece because in the input side, the user are sitting on usually Spermutter because most of our data is at NERSC. So the input side will be per mother and they can decide if they want per mother to be the compute side or if they want to send to Dory, for instance. So we'll like transfer all the data. If it's Dory, we'll transfer via using Globus all the data, all the inputs that are necessary to that run and the workflow uh, files as well. Uh, via Globus to the compute side and the user doesn't need to um, think about that. So uh, once we dispatch that and we copy the data using Globus, we we sit in another component of JAWS, which is the JAWS site. Uh, JAWS site, it, we have one installation in each one of the clusters that we have available, the resources that we have available, and we JAWS site will dispatch then the work to the Cromwell server. Also, we have a Cromwell server installed in each one of the clusters. And Cromwell is our uh, workflow um, execution engine and connects with our backend infrastructure, um, in, in this case, Condor. And Condor will request then a full Slurm node. And of course, we will share these resources with all the tasks that we need to run at that moment. Now, when the job is done, when the task is completed, then we'll do the inverse, we'll transfer all the data back uh, to the user, to the input side, again, using um, using Globus for that. And another, uh, another piece for uh, JAWS is the use of, uh, we are collecting the performance metrics for each one of the tasks, each one of um, the runs that we are executing we uh we are collecting the performance metrics and for that we are using the elastic stack um to storage all that information and we use kibana to uh make all the visualizations and um then we have a dashboard available for the users to provide like a visualization reports of the use of the resources um Oops. Let me click here. And then this is a, a, a print screen of our dashboard. Um, right now we are spending quite some time uh, refactoring, redesigning the entire process from the last the performance metrics, from the elastic search, all that metrics collection. And we are redesigning this uh, dashboard, improving this dashboard as well. In addition, we are also um, redesigning our monitoring system, our internal monitoring system. And uh, the main reason is to, we developed that as a proof of concept, and now we want to be able to scale that to all the systems that we may have available. Uh, and um, so we are in this process of working on improving either the performance metrics collection, the dashboard, and our internal monitor system as well. Um, now you may ask yourselves, like, uh, why we are using widows, um, why we are using containers. I think from the talks from yesterday, you can understand the containers are um, creating containers and uh, reusing container image there 
are available um, in the community uh, makes our analysis reproduci reproducible and allows the distribution of uh, the work across different systems. But in the case of Weirdos, at the beginning of the JOS project, we investigate other alternatives. Um, for instance, at the time, um, CWL, which is the common flow language. And one of the main reasons that we decided to use Weirdos was because of the extensive community support and also because in my opinion, I think uh, the learning path, the learning curve path from Widows is easy compared to the other uh, workflow languages available. But especially I think because of the support, the community support that we have available. And here you can see three examples of three communities that provides um, um, entire pipelines um, or subtasks that you can import in your main workflow and reuse that. And also a community of uh, developers that provide container images that you can use direct in your workflow. Uh, another point about Widows is that also eliminates, as I was mentioned that we always have this multiple steps in, in the bioinformatic analysis, we always need to think about the inputs and outputs. And once you use widows, that is we clean all the glue code necessary to plug in all these steps together, all these different tools together and all the different outputs and inputs necessary to do the analysis. So um, the description, when you look to the workflow, is very accessible. Anyone can look that and understand what is going on. It's very clear uh, which output became the input of the next uh, step and so on. So it's easy, facilitates the work to share that with the community and also within uh, JGI. <clears throat> Sorry. And another point that <clears throat> I would like to highlight here is the fact that when we are developing JAWS and all the components of JAWS, we always think, um, we always try to be as agnostic as possible. And what I mean with that <clears throat> is that um, if another alternative comes up, like for instance, a better solution for um, workflow uh, execution engine will be available and we can replace Cromwell, will be easy to deattach Cromwell and replace you an, uh, with another tool. So we're always thinking about when we design the JAWS infrastructure that we can either have uh, support another workflow description language um, different than um, in addition to Widows, but also there is pieces that we can easily replace if better uh, alternatives are available. Um, and now I would like to switch a little bit of gears and discuss about like one of our biggest challenge when we are providing support for the users. And especially here in GGI is like when we are migrating legacy workflows um, to Widows. So we have examples of workflows they have been developing or workflow analysis pipelines they have been developing over the 15 years. Um, and in this case is a is an is an example of that uh, where we have a super nested workflow and this representation that I'm bringing here in the screen is an example of a sub sub workflow. Uh, so each one of these red um, circles represent one task, and what the user trying to do here was for each bioinformatic tool. And you see that there's some duplication in the names here. So each bioinformatic command, they create one task. And in the first line of the red circles, they we don't have any uh, dependencies. So we can run these six uh, tasks in parallel. It is the same is true for this the second line and the third line. And then I think the um, um, the thinking of the user was like, they can also reuse this container images available in the community and they plug in in that way. 
the result of this workflow was um was a nightmare because uh, each one of these tasks was an execution time of around 15 to 10 to 15 seconds. And that result, like, just for you to have an idea, over 17,000 tasks. And of course, we had the file system overhead. And because with the file system, we had to write. So when Chromium was creating the entire um, um the structure they need to run um, behind the scenes. We have a lot of, we are touching the, fi uh, the file system all the time because we need to write all the standard errors. We need to create folders and subfolders. And even if it's a small task that only requires 15 seconds, we, we have that overhead in the file system. And the solution for this uh, was by a, a very, very simple improvement was just combining the six commands in the six tasks in the first line and combining the four and three uh, in the second and third line. Uh, and then we create only one task. And then we create, of course, um, a container image that contain all the bioinformatic tools for executing the task. But with that, we are able to reduce in 71% the number of tasks and 73% um, the execution time of that. So it's a significant um, um, reducing the execution time and uh, by just adjusting a little bit. But this is happening a lot with our um, users. And here's like a few more examples of that. Um, a few pipelines that we uh, migrated from um, all the other language usually bash, they combine that two widows and um, the execution, the re reduction, re reduction of the execution time was from 35% up to 80% in some cases. And we also help the users here um, to improve the existing workflows. Uh, for example, uh, the, um, the last line in the table is an example of a workflow that was already in widows, but just making one adjustment to use the temp instead of the scratch when executing um, the jobs in the compute nodes, um, because some of the steps was very IO intensive, we uh, were able to have a success rate of almost 100%. So we don't need to go there and re-execute, rerun uh, the same workflow over and over to be able to get all the tasks completely uh, um, successfully. Um, so the user support, uh, as you can imagine, is a major part of uh, our work uh, within JAWS because then we help uh, our staffs for migrating, uh, even for creating something new, but also migrating uh, widows um, migrating legacy workflows to widows and then running and executing that to uh, JAWS. Uh, over the past year, our community, our user community grew a lot. So we are now only uh, working with the early adopters. Now we are actually running production work with that uh, through JAWS. So, that all that requires a lot of extensive user support. We have uh, regular office hours, we have hackathons, we have uh, workshops available for the users. And the main goal with all, all the tools available for the users is to try to develop a JGI user community around widows, containers, and reproducibility and shareability. So um, we can help the community um, to grow and to have the uh, transfer knowledge between them. So the users in the community can help each other, not only depending on the JAWS uh, team for that. Uh, but of course, we also have available um, personalized pair programming session, especially for the cases I just showed to you where uh, users can have very, very complex workflows. I, I don't know how I'm, long, I'm going with the time, but I have a few slides 
uh, x-ray slides to show like a real case of a very complicated workflow as well. Um, and then just to finalize here to talk about our current and your, our future work, especially for this year, um, as I mentioned, we are redesigning the performance metrics in our internal monitoring system. That also is connecting with the fact that we want to have all this data available and this st statistical data to make a decision which cluster we should send the job and not leave that option for the user. Because right now the user is choosing um, the sites, the compute side that they want the, the, the job to go. And we want to make that as an automatically um, routing option within JAWS. And for that, we need all these performance uh, metrics and our monitoring system in place to be able to make that decision for the users. Uh, as I mentioned, we also like working very close with the Oak Ridge and the Argonne National Labs to deploy the two uh, new sites over there. And also we have this um, collaboration and we are working on with the NMDC uh, team and uh, they are finalizing all, they are porting all the workflows uh, to Widows as well. And they will start to run production work uh, through JAWS as well. We already have one dedicated JAWS site uh, for NERSC, uh, from NMDC that is running on NERSC, in addition to the uh, JGI JAWS site that we have available. And we are about to deploy a new NMDC JAW site on EMSO cluster as well. And of course, we want to provide um, the support to GPU nodes and um, make a, um, a more close connection and integration with our other systems that we have available at JGI, which is Jamo for the data management and the RQC who takes care of like all the samples that are coming out of the machines and automatically running a lot of our uh, workflows. So we are working very close with them to make sure that we can connect JAWS with the other um, JGI infrastructure that we have available. So with that, I will thank you and I am um, happy to take any questions. All right, great, thank you. <laughs> Do we have any questions for Danny? I know one of the things on the last page was the uh, automatic job routing. Uh, yeah. Do you think that will help out your users a lot? Um, to, to have them have it automatically route the jobs for, for them? I think so, that will help them, especially because um, they don't have access, they do have, usually our JGI users, they have access to Dory, for instance, and Permutter. So they can check the queue, but they don't have access to Tahoma. So they will never know how long that will take for getting a new Slurm node and actually to be able to run there. And we do have that. And also by having the performance metrics and the statistical data, we'll be able to make the decision like, oh yeah, we need this amount of CPU and memory. So um, that would be also very helpful for the users. Yeah, great. Any other questions? All right, if not, then we'll thank our speaker again. <laughs>